Hi everyone, my name is Nabila Lahir. I'm from Rehab for All South Africa. And we are really excited to give you this live event on tablet technology for people with disabilities. Before we start, I would like to say if you have not already, please follow our pages and on, uh, follow us at Rehab for All South Africa. We are on Twitter, we are on Instagram, we are on Facebook and LinkedIn. If you are interested in supporting people with disabilities or if you work with them, we would love to engage with you. Now, this month, it has been a Disability Rights Awareness Month in South Africa. And one of the themes of this month has been inclusive education for people with disabilities. At Rio Paul South Africa, one of the things we really believe in is the power of technology to bridge the gap between people with disabilities and the environment that they live in. And di digital technology is one of the things that can really help children with disabilities to access the environment in different ways through better learning experiences, through communication, through accessing social and recreational um, opportunities as well. We are very excited to have Chelsea Williamson here from we have for, uh, from uh, High School Africa, which is a nonprofit organization that aims to bring technology to disadvantaged schools in South Africa. Um, Chelsea comes from an extensive background in the application of technology for people with disabilities, particularly using Apple technology like iPads. And we are really excited to hear more about some of the work she does and her thoughts and experiences in the field. Chelsea, welcome to Rehab for All South Africa. It's good to have you here. Thanks so much, Nabila, and thanks so much for having me. <laughs> now, I'm sure our viewers would love to hear more about your work at iSchool Africa. But before that, can you tell us a bit about your personal background and how you got into this? Perfect. So um, my story is quite personal. I was at the age of nine diagnosed with learning and neurodiverse disabilities, um, known as the invisible disabilities. And I was fortunate enough to have been overseas um, at an inclusive school. And I was introduced to technology to empower me with my disabilities. When I moved back to South Africa, I saw that the support that I had overseas wasn't available here. Um, nowhere near on the level that I'd experienced it and from that point I had I have dedicated my life to making sure that I can empower learners that are in the same or similar situation to giving them accessible technology to empower them with their disabilities and that's become a passion project with me and it's why I work at iSchool Africa because that's what they do it's their vision it's their mission um, and I love working at a company that is so passionate about empowering children with disabilities. Can you, that brings us to our next question. Can you tell us more about iSchool Africa and the work that you do? So iSchool Africa is an education trust um, and we partner, we're an Apple solution expert in the field of education. So that's why we use Apple technology, uh, MacBooks, iPads, Apple TV and the likes. Um, and I've seen personally how using the Apple technology, because it has these built-in accessibility features, it really is what takes the technology to another level for children with disabilities. But iSchool Africa runs three main programs. The first one is the one that I facilitate for, which is the um, inclusion and accessibility, working with children with special needs um, it, across the board, disabilities across the board, across the country, we're in every single province. And then the second one that we run is rural and developing schools, giving schools that don't have access to this technology and need access to this technology, making sure that they get it as well. And the third one that we run is coding. So coding for special needs, coding for rural and developing schools, but using the technology and empowering them with a, a necessary 21st century skill. So that's iSchool Africa in a nutshell. <laughs> It sounds very extensive. So can you walk us through what an example of how you would integrate with a school, just say a special needs school that works with children with disabilities? I mean, what types of disabilities would this be? And how would you be involved with the school through iSchool Africa? 
So we work with disabilities across the board. Um, we have schools for blind learners, deaf learners, autistic learners, learning disabilities, physical disabilities, mixed disabilities, as well as inclusive schools. So um, this is our new passion project is finding mainstream schools that are open to accepting learners with disabilities. So for example, in Rosebank, we've just partnered with a school that accepted four completely blind learners and we're using technology as a tool to create those inclusive environments. So we work with disabilities across the board from mainstream schools that are inclusive to special needs schools. And our general process is we partner with funders or sponsors that want to um, give to a school. We provide them access to the technology, but then something with iSchool Africa is we provide the training as well. Because what we've seen more often than not is companies will come along and say oh we've got these secondhand laptops and we'll just give it to the school and they dump it without adequate training it's not proper technology it's just technology and what ends up happening is it sits in the back of a closet so we make sure that we give world-class technologies to these children so that they're able to use it to the best of their abilities and secondly we provide them with specialist training on how to use this technology to the best of the technology's ability and empower the learners so we partners we partner with schools it's not a short term thing we make sure that it's a long term thing and we have monitoring and evaluation before and after to make sure that we can um show the progress that's been made in the schools so it's a long it's a long process <laughs> and it seems like you are very involved in a very very holistic way in everything that we do. Absolutely. What kind, of what kind of progress have you seen? Can you tell us about some of the progress you've seen from this um, intervention? So I, I can give you stories like never before, but I mean, the one that comes to the top of my mind was a, a girl um, in Randburg, a school in Randburg, there was a girl who'd lost both her arms due to a car accident. And her biggest dream was she wanted to play a musical instrument. Um, and now for us as able-bodied individuals, you know, it sounds like, oh, I want to play the piano. I can do that next month. But for her, having lost her arms, it took away this dream. Any ambition of wanting to become a musician was gone until we gave her an iPad and introduced her to the Apple native app GarageBand. And now all of a sudden, she was able to play any musical instrument that she wanted simply by touching the device or by speaking and using her voice. And it's simple things like that, giving children their dreams back. But other than that, we can, we've can we seen deaf learners that haven't been able to communicate with the hearing community because the hearing community hasn't learned sign language yet. It's not the 12th official language yet. Um, but using an iPad or using an Apple device, an iPhone, they're able to use um, things like dictation or speak screen where they're able to effectively communicate with the hearing community and become, create accessible environments for themselves. I mean, these are just two stories out of two of the disabilities. We've got so many, um, but it really, we've seen how it opens doors and it opens dreams. That's really, really incredible. And I think both of the stories just highlight, you know, what we try to say when it comes to technology and how proactive we need to be as a society. Or even in kind of society. Um, do you see experiences, do you experience challenges when trying to implement this program in, in various environments? So I'm not going to lie to you and say it's, a, it's an easy dream. Of course, there are challenges, I think. Anybody that says that they don't have challenges is either lying to themselves or lying to others. So we, we definitely have challenges and obstacles that we have to overcome. I think, you know, the first one, which is the typical NPO one, is obviously finding the right funders to come alongside us. And secondly, finding the right schools, because we don't want to go into any school, especially if a school doesn't have 100% buy-in if they are not committed to using this technology, it's going to end up being wasted. And like I said, sitting in the back of a, a classroom in, in a store box. And um, it's happened at some of our schools. And it's sad because that technology could be used at another school that um, is willing and ready and able to use it to the best of its ability. So definitely finding and getting buy-in from the schools. Um is, is one of our, our biggest things. And the third thing, which is 
quite an interesting one is the stigma around Apple technology. I think a lot of people are weary of the the term Apple technology because they think, oh, it's the elitist. But actually, Apple technology is the most accessible technology available on the market. Um, and when we're looking at price points, there is no comparison um, because when you put eggs with eggs, you will see, and apples with apples, you will actually see Apple technology is affordable and accessible. Um, but overcoming that initial stigma of, oh, Apple technology, <laughs> that's quite a big challenge to, to change those mindsets. You know, I think, you know, from when I think about this, and, and we always seem to look at this from the wrong perspective, in a sense of just 15 years ago, for any disabled child to get a communication device, a rudimentary communication device, cost 40, upwards of 40, 50,000 rand. Absolutely. Um, now, just the fact that any device already, an, an Apple or an iPad is already providing that it's such a lower price into a much greater variety is incredible, mm. you know? And, and well, you know, given looking at it from that perspective, we should just be pushing it on, you know, pushing it on. Yeah. Well, that's the thing is with Apple technology, it comes with these accessibility features built into the devices and they're free. So you're right. There are screen readers available for um, other devices that can cost you up to 80,000 Rand per year per license. And it, it makes technology and accessibility so unaffordable and inaccessible. Whereas when you buy any Apple device, all these features are available for free. They come built into the devices because Apple truly does prioritize accessibility. It's just about knowing where to go and where to turn it on. And do you have any suggestions regarding funding or you know institutions and school helping you to fund your program how how people can fund us mm -hmm. yes how could they how do these programs become more sustainable over time so i think you know what it's it, and it's so cheesy to say it but it starts with the individual and it starts with conversations once you are aware of the importance of technology and the power that technology happens, that's when we've seen um, people really buy in. So iSchool Africa, we generally find um, it's easier to partner with one corporate or one partner or one individual that's able to partner with one entire school for a project. So um, yesterday we were we partnered with uh, Sarah Kamala, who was the first African woman to climb Mount Everest. Um, and she partnered with us. She broke a Guinness Book of World Record and all the money that she raised in that Guinness Book of World Record came to iSchool Africa. And she has now, as a result, funded two schools with a digital library. And um, so it's much easier if we have one person or one partner that's able to partner with us for an entire project rather than bits and pieces. However, that being said, we've also seen the power of the individuals. Um, over lockdown, we ran a campaign called My Future, where we were raising money um, to give all the matrics in South Africa iPads so that they weren't left behind with education. So all children that didn't have access to education, giving them iPads so that they're able to not lose anything. Um, and what we've seen is individuals came forward and donated their iPads that were in perfect condition and those iPads were given to the matrix. So we use the refurbished iPads as part of the project, as well as individuals donating generously to the program. We were able to use that money to give and buy iPads for other schools and other centers. So it's really been amazing to see how South Africans have gathered together to ensure that the matrix futures aren't left behind. It's really, really incredible. I think you've given us such a great example of how, you know, our community can come together to support this kind of initiative. Um, and just as a final question, you know, we are a platform, we have a lot of professionals like uh, occupational therapists, speech therapists who also work a lot with people with disabilities. And they have an important role to play in ensuring that use of technology is, first of all, achievable and also sustainable. Um, and support it through time. Do you have any advice for them on how they can better integrate with your work? So first thing, I'm going to be very vulnerable here. Um, they need to keep doing what they're doing. I mean, most people 
don't know, but disability is our spectrum. So when I was diagnosed with my disabilities, um, it was it's a spectrum of one to five when I was diagnosed. Um, and I was one being severe, five being you're okay. I was diagnosed as level two. But through the support of occupational therapists, speech therapists, technolo technological intervention therapy, I was at the end of my primary school, I was on level four. So that just goes to show how much the therapists, how much they make an impact. And I really, I, I owe everything to the therapists that, that helped me on my journey. Um, so please keep doing what you're doing. But when we, iSchool Africa, what we do is we make sure that we work closely with these therapists because you can't give the technology to the teachers and not the therapists. It needs to be a holistic approach. And there are amazing apps and features that were developed by occupational therapists, by speech therapists that are available for use. Um, Dexteria is a fine motor and gross skill app that's available. There's Dyslexia Quest for uh, learners with learning disabilities. I mean, I mean, there's augmented and ACC apps like ProLocker to Go. I mean, there are so many apps out there that were developed for therapists. And it's so important that therapists integrate technology into their therapy rooms because that's how learners will start to really use it and make the best use of it as if it's a holistic approach so we make sure that we work very closely with our therapists as well and run specific programs to them and we also we actually have cpd points available to them because we know that it's that important um so yeah so just keep doing what you're doing and just keep learning and keep growing so we, we really hope to be hearing more of your events and we have all South Africa on our newsletter and pages and we hope that you know many more people will come and access it from, from that point. And Absolutely. Um, um, Chelsea, can you tell us how do people get in contact with you if they're interested in connecting? Uh, absolutely. So with their schools? Absolutely. So iSchool Africa, we're on um, same pla social media platforms as you, and it's at iSchool Africa. Um, so we're on Facebook, on Instagram, on LinkedIn, on Twitter, um, or you can visit our website, www.ischoolafrica.com, or you can email me, um, chelsea at ischoolafrica.com, and I'm more than happy to start these conversations. I do a lot of training with individuals as well as the schools, because um, we've also partnered with the iStore because they've seen how it's really important that adults with disabilities are having the same support. So we, we do training for adults and children, and it's really important to know that there's help for you. If, if you need help for accessibility for your devices, please get in touch with me. I'm that person who wants to help. <laughs> Uh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. And thank you so much for that. I mean, just reading some of the comments I see here, we've got Kenneth Timber Disabilities who say, Wow, we really found that technology can be used to bridge the two communities. Yes, I love that. It can be created between therapists and, I, and partners like iSchool Africa. And mm. that's definitely the message that we've got from you today. And we, we're really, really excited to see the you know, future partnership possibilities which we have for all South Africa. Uh, Chelsea Williams, thank you so much for joining us today. It's a real pleasure to learn from your, from your experience. Um, thank you so much for having me. Uh, you're welcome. And to all our viewers, thank you for joining us. Um, please do again sign up to our pages if you have not already and, and so that you can keep in touch with these events in the future. Thank you very much.